I still assumed that, oh, it was early. Like, in my brain, I think I still thought that it was pretty early. So I was like, why are they not watching TV like they normally would be? You know what I mean? And as a child, I always had this irrational fear that they would never come back to me. <laughs> like, that my parents would just leave and not come back for some reason. To this day, like, I still get very paranoid if my parents are, like, later than they say that they're gonna be home like if, if my parents say that they're gonna be home at a certain time and it's like an hour later past that time and they're not answering their phone i freak out like and that goes for anyone that i care about like if you're like my boyfriend you know my brother my a close friend of mine like if i care about you and you tell me you're gonna be home at a certain time and you're not home at that time i'm gonna be freaking out i was just having a million thoughts a mile going through my brain like oh my god they're not home where did they go why is there nobody here watching us like i was genuinely freaking out so the fact that they weren't watching tv made me think that they went out but then i was like oh my god they left us alone like what the heck where are they like i was just freaking out did not have a cell phone so you know what eight-year-old sylvia did just i want you guys to take a guess just Go in the comment section down below right now and guess what eight-year-old Sylvia did in downtown Toronto, Ontario. There is a bunch of weird people out at that night. It was late at night. Eight-year-old Sylvia opens the door to her house and runs out. I'm in my pajamas. I'm eight years old. I run out, leave my door wide open, and I'm like running down the street because... So the way that my building was built was my house was here and then you would go down because it was like a big like townhouse condo type place. So my house was here, you would go down and then there'd be a lot like the laundry machine, like the laundry room, whatever for all of the residents would be just down like a couple of doors down from my house. So I ran down the street thinking, okay, maybe my mom's doing laundry. Like, I was being so irrational. So I ran down, left my dark door wide open to go see if my mom was in the laundry room. She was not, the laundry room was empty, the lights were off. There was nobody in the laundry room. So at this point, I'm freaking out and I see a person, I see a guy walking towards me and I start screaming, help, help, help. I literally just heard screaming, help, help, help. And this guy, I felt so bad for him. He was such a nice guy, but this this story could have gone so bad so quick if it was someone different with bad intentions. So I saw this guy walking towards me and I started yelling, help, help, help. And he, you know, he started walking a little faster and he came up to me eventually and he was like, what's wrong? And I told him, I'm like, I don't know where my parents are. Like, I'm bawling my eyes out at this point, mind you. I don't know where my parents are. I, I, like, Normally they would be watching TV, they're not here. Well, I'm crying. I let this guy, mind you, he's like an older guy, like in his mid-20s, early 30s, something like that. So I'm like pouring all of my heart out to this guy, sh scared shitless. And this guy's like, Okay, um, do you have a do you have a phone? Do you know their number? I didn't know my parents' number. <laughs> I didn't know my dad's number. My dad was the only one that had a cell phone at the time and I did not know know his number. So I was like, No, I don't know their number. But he was like, You have a phone. So I was just like, Yeah, yeah I knew. And he's like, Okay, um, the only thing we can really do is call 911. And I was just like, Okay, yeah, 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 come in, come in. I let this guy in, like a random guy off of the street in downtown Toronto, Ontario, in the middle of the night. I let this random stranger in to my house as an eight-year-old little girl crying, being so vulnerable. Like this situation could have gone so wrong if it was someone else, if it was someone with bad intentions, could have gone so wrong so fast. So he called the cops and we're waiting. You know, I'm like sitting down, he's sitting down with me. Such a nice guy. Um, and we were just waiting for the cops and all of a sudden, it hit me. My parents are in their room asleep. That's the idea that came to my head. I was like, oh my god. I think my parents are asleep in my room. I didn't say anything to him yet because mind you, I just bawled to him about everything going on. I claimed I didn't know where my parents were. I claimed they left me, they abandoned us. Like, the cops are on their way. So I didn't mention anything to him, but in my head I was like, 
fuck, I think they're sleeping in their room. So my dumbass, I'm like, wait here, I just need to go see something. Run upstairs, open my parents' door. And there they were, just sleeping. It was 1.30 in the morning. The cops were on their way. I ran out looking for them, thinking they abandoned me. Called the cops on them. And I was like, fuck. And my mom woke up, because she's a very light sleeper. She has sleeping issues, just like I do. So she's a very light sleeper. And I was like, I, I was like, oh no. I did something bad. And she's just like, what, what do you mean? And I'm like, I'm like, the cops are on their way here. Imagine being a parent, just being asleep in the room, and then your child comes into your room at like one in the morning saying that the cops are on their way here because they thought that you left and they couldn't, they didn't know where you were. She was mad. She was pissed. So I go downstairs to tell this guy, and I'm like, my parents are actually asleep in their room. I don't know what happened to me. I just thought they left. And this guy was just like, okay, well, the cops are on their way. <laughs> so there's not really anything I can do about it anymore. And then my mom comes down with my dad. They're starting to talk to the guy, and that's when I like exit the situation. The cops arrive shortly after, and my parents. I don't know. The guy explained his part of the story. My parents, you know, were like, we were just asleep. And I was just there. Like, I am a fucking idiot. And that's, that's really the end of the story. Nothing really happened after that. To this day, I look back at that time and I just think, like, why didn't you look at the time when you woke up in the first place? Why, how, why did your brain automatically go to, oh, they left somewhere? Like, I don't know. I do not know. It was all fine, though, in the end, which was great. Um, because, like I said, this story could have gone so many different ways. And it could have gone, this whole situation could have gone really badly if it was... A, someone with bad intentions, some evil person, you know, wanting to take advantage of a kid, a sit of the situation. Like, I'm so lucky that I'm okay and that it the story ended the way that it did because it literally could have gone so bad so quick. I'm an idiot. I was an idiot back then. I continue to be an idiot to this day. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not. But yeah, that is that is the end of the story. Thank God it went the way that it did and not any other way because think about it, like you're an eight year old girl running down running out into the downtown of this the biggest city. Like Toronto's a massive city and you're running around in the middle of the night as an eight year old girl asking a random person for help, a random guy comes in, and like, it could have just gone so wrong so quick, like, I could have gotten kidnapped, other things could have happened, like, I'm lucky that it went the way that it did, but that is the end of the story, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, if you have any interesting stories or stories where you were not the smartest, let me know down in the comments below, love to hear them. Hopefully I'm not the only idiot. <laughs> like, I swear, I look back at the story now and I'm just like, how? Like, the whole thing does not make sense to me at all. But honestly, all in all, I'm lucky. Anyway, like I said, that is the end of the story. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications. That way you get notified every single time that I post a video. You don't want to miss an upload posting pretty good content if I do say so myself so you definitely do not want to miss out but yeah thank you guys so much for watching oh. Oh. <laughs> thank you guys
guys so much for watching. Let's spread love and positivity wherever we go. And I will catch you guys in my next video.